Hundreds of millions of years ago, the Peloponnese, the rest of Greece, and virtually the entire Mediterranean were covered by the primordial Tethys Sea. For millions of years, sediment, shells of various organisms and detritus from earlier surface rocks accumulated on the bed of the Tethys Sea. During the geological eras, pressure from overlying rock strata, high temperatures, diverse chemical reactions, and many other factors gradually transformed the original loose material on the seabed into solid limestone. Thus were created the limestone rock formations visible today all over Greece, and particularly in the area of Stymphalia. During the phase of orogenesis, when the mountains and mountain ranges were formed, these calcareous rocks gradually rose. Enormous forces generated by the movements of the plates of the lithosphere began to deform the upper strata of the Earth's crust, so creating the mountains of Greece and southern Europe. Then came the erosive action of rainwater, both underground and on the surface, which, in the course of millions of years, resulted in the present form and aspect of the limestone mountains. Specifically, characteristic of the wider region of Stymphalia are mountains large and small, such as Oligritos and Ziria, as well as many little enclosed basins, such as of Stymphalia, Feneos, Pelini and Scotini. Part of the waters that fall into the basins and onto the surrounding mountains flows over the ground surface in torrents and streams, such as the Castagnotico stream and the Saseneto and Kefalari rivulets. Obeying the law of gravity, the waters flow into the lowest points of the basin, creating lakes. The waters collected in these basins do not seem to have an outlet on the surface. They enter fissures and cavities in the limestone rocks and flow underground until they appear as springs at various low points in the basins. The waters from the springs are added to the surface waters and together form lakes in the lowest parts of the basins. In the distant past, before any human intervention, the movement of waters in the wider region of Symphalia was as follows. A large part of the waters from the Feneos Basin ended up underground through sinkholes in the river Ladon. Likewise, the waters from the small mountain basins on Ziria ended up, as they still do, at the springs of Symphalia. The waters in these springs, which gathered the subterranean waters of the limestone massif of Ziria, ended up unhindered in Lake Symphalia. Thus, the level of the lake was rising continuously, and when it exceeded a certain height, the waters flowed into the Givomantra sinkhole, and as a subterranean water course, eventually reached the plain of Argos. In periods when the sinkhole was blocked by earth, stones, and other materials, the lake spread and filled the entire basin, flooding the land and making the life of the inhabitants difficult. The unblocking of the sinkhole gave new life, hope, as well as inspiration for myths, such as that of Hercules, who slew the Stymphalian birds, that is, he drained the waters that formed swamps and rid the region of the pestilence of malaria. This was a situation until about the 2nd century AD, when, in the reign of Emperor Hadrian, the aqueduct that carried water from the Drisa springs to Corinth was constructed. The basic change that the aqueduct brought was the opening of the two tunnels, Suri and Prathi, and the Scotini Canal. In this way, a large part of the water from the Drisa Springs was channeled outside the basin and no longer ended up in Lake Symphalia. From this alone, it is deduced that the average level of the lake was generally lower than in previous millennia. Its surface area was reduced and the water reached the height of the sinkhole far less frequently. Some 14 centuries after the Hadrianic aqueduct became defunct, man returned to intervene once more in the hydrological system of the region. In the Feneos Basin, there was a natural lake known from antiquity, several dozen square kilometers in area and several dozen meters deep. Its level fluctuated according to the rainfall rate and to the state of blockage of the sinkholes, through which the excess waters flowed underground into the river Ladon. In the early decades of the 20th century, this lake was drained, but smaller bodies of water continued to exist. Recently, in the 1990s, a small dam was constructed, creating the man-made Lake Doxa, the waters from which are used to irrigate the region's crops. Moreover, 
In the 1880s, the small Paparigopoulos tunnel had been opened in the Stymphalian basin, through which the waters of little Lake Pellini were channeled into Lake Stymphalia. Thus, Lake Pellini ceased to exist and the reclaimed land was used for agriculture. From the mid-1930s, part of the waters of the Drisa Springs began to be diverted to the Voja Plain through the Vohaikos Channel, as well as to the Skotini Alea Valley to irrigate the fields. Since the 1960s, water has been brought from Lake Stymphalia, with the help of strong pumps, high up to a reservoir for irrigating the crops of the villages Castagna, Lafka and Drosopigi. Thus, the fluctuation in the level of the lake waters, and consequently their surface area, is less. The waters almost never reach the mouth of the Yivomandra sinkhole, which essentially no longer functions. So is completed a journey into time, with water as main protagonist, whose movement and action formed, and continues to form, the wider region of Stymphalia.